Success Therapy Growing Small Business Awesome. Excellent. Well, thank you all for, for showing up tonight and joining us, uh, whether you're here live and online and the recorded version too. Welcome to everybody that's watching. And uh, let's get started. So the purpose of tonight is to not only introduce you to success therapy and what we do and how we help our clients, but also to be able to give you some tools and techniques to be able to help you out throughout your day. And tonight's focus is going to be on what we call a fear of rejection. So there are many things that success therapy works with, but the purpose of tonight is just to be able to look at that, um, what else, or that focus in particular and see if there's kind of any connections for you and what's kind of ringing a bell and hopefully help you to get rid of some resistance in that area, help you to be more effective, not only in your interactions on a daily basis with people that you may or may not know, also in negotiating skills and sales skills as an entrepreneur, it, fear of rejection is insidious. It can take over in a lot of places and being able to eliminate it will also help you in numerous places in your life. So, and it's awesome. So I'm assuming at some point in time, some of you have felt like this. Yes? Anyone? Anyone? Yes, we are on the phone. Anybody here ever done sales, like commission 100% sales? Awesome. Yes, then you and I are very familiar with this experience. You might have the dent to prove it on your hand. <laughs> it happens a lot. Or you may be in this position where you're going, oh man, I don't want to talk to anybody, can't talk to anybody, and you start to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And uh, yeah, it's you, your box, and your phone going, oh, that sucks. Or you have the fear of this happening, but it hasn't happened yet, which is also Awesome in one way that hasn't happened yet, but destructive in another way in that it can create some inertia. So we would like you to, and I'm sure you would like to, feel more like this, where you're comfortable being able to interact and meet new people, whether you know them or not, be able to have that rapport where you're being able to have conversations, um, being introduced by people that you know, and or just going about meeting new people. Yes? Awesome. We want you to feel like this, so that every day is just like, yay, it's a day in the beach, I got this handled, I'm a rock star, and we are golden. But that may not be happening for you yet. We're gonna get you there. So I want you to understand that fears, doubts, and anxieties that you experience when you step out of your comfort zone are not from lack of potential, they come from inferior conditioning in your subconscious mind. Another way of saying that is negative results are the consequence of inferior conditioning and not because of lack of potential. So it's not because you're incapable of doing something. It's not because you weren't born to socialize. It's not because you weren't born to be a salesperson or any ridiculous thought like that. It's just because up until now, you may have experiences that you created beliefs from that said, I'm not good at this, I can't do that whatever the case might be. So in 2005, I came up with a process we call success therapy. And basically what it is is a five-step process to help you to get to the root cause or to this conditioning that causes you to act or behave in a certain way or feel a certain way. So the five-step process basically helps you to find the source, detangle it from past assumptions or conclusions, helps you to get a new perspective, come to new conclusions that are supportive to you, and we save this new way of thinking so that you just act in a different sort of way. So to break this down a little bit, finding the source of why you may have a fear of rejection. Most people, if you ask them, you know, why do you have a fear of rejection? Well, I don't know, I just hate the idea of people <laughs> rejecting me, like, is that not normal? And you go, yeah, it's totally normal. So they're not really kind of insightful enough or haven't done enough kind of personal development work to really understand where it's coming from, or they just don't care where it's coming from, which is fine too. What we do is help them to get to that root cause because if we can find that source, then like I said, we can detangle it from past assumptions. Because oftentimes what will happen is something happens and will create assumptions or will make decisions and say, it happened because of this, that, and the other thing, whether we're right or not. What we want to do is as I say, it's detangling because I always refer to it as, um, or I create the analogy of taking out your Christmas lights. So you may or may not 
set up Christmas lights, but I'm sure you've heard of people who set up Christmas lights or you have kind of an idea of what happens. Somebody goes to the garage, they pull out this box, it's got all these lights all tangled up and you go, oh yeah, I'm gonna go and put up my lights, it's gonna be spectacular. And all of a sudden one's attached to the other and you pull it out and it just looks like a ball of yarn and you have to sit there and take more time detangling these things gently so that you're not breaking all the old bulbs and then trying to straighten them out. What we do is we do that for you so that not only are they in nice straight lines, but then we can put it up in a way that you want it. And then when you hit the on switch or plug in the light, all of a sudden you go, yay, and it's beautiful and exactly the way you want it. Except for we don't do that with Christmas lights, we do that with your fonts. But the same effect happens. Because once you have that new perspective, or we've lined up all of those thoughts independently, you can start to look at them and question them and go, is this true, is this not true? Do I wanna buy into that anymore? Does this thought necessarily relate to that thought? You know, are these two lines of Christmas lights actually attached or are they two separate ones that I can completely separate, throw one out and keep the other one? That allows us to come to new conclusions that are now supportive to you. Because I'm sure you'll agree, if you came to a conclusion when you were five years old, you probably have a lot more information now <laughs> on that circumstance that might just influence how you think about it. Yeah? Awesome. So basically what we're doing is allowing you, even though you've made a lot of conclusions when you were little, to look at it now as an adult and go, okay, I'll I don't believe this anymore. I don't want to buy into this anymore. I totally believe in this. And in fact, I want to add this thought in. So we allow you to do that in a way that we can kind of embed that thought into your mind. And then when you go off and do your day, you now have this new way of thinking. And as I go through in my courses, there's actually three ways of changing your beliefs. One is through reason. You just kind of go, hey, that's not happening in Marin. You just go, yep, yeah, that makes sense. You get new information, you just make a new decision, right? You can, if you can do that, do that all day long. That is the easiest way to change your thought processes and your conditioning. But how many of you have ever made a decision that you're gonna do something and then the next day you completely did the exact opposite of it and you don't know why? <laughs> Excellent. So you know that you know, just reason alone isn't always enough. So the second way that works is repetition. Repetition works through, and if you hear something often enough, eventually you'll believe it. Now the problem with the eventually you'll believe it is that could take years. And if you want to start a business, are you really wait, willing to wait years in order to create the success that you desire? Probably not. And you may not have the finances to wait that long either. <laughs> so we wanna be able to speed that process up, right? The way we can influence speeding that up is through the third way, which is emotional charge. The more emotional charge that we have to an idea or a concept, the faster we can change that belief. So how many of you have heard the idea that it takes you know, 20, 30 days, whatever it is, to change a habit? It's 28 days? Anybody say anything else? Okay, if I have a habit of dragging my hands across the counter and I go over to a friend's house and they have one of those fancy dancy new stove tops that doesn't turn red when it's on, and all of a sudden I can smell burning flesh, and then all of a sudden it radiates up my arm, and then it hits my head like a ball of lava. How long is it gonna take me to change the habit of dragging my hands across the counter? <laughs> About as fast as it took for the pain to ricochet or to, to rich up my arm, right? So it really doesn't take 28 days, it's a nice day, it's a nice number, and if you really do something 28 days in a row, you've probably got it down pat and it's safe to say that, yeah, it's a habit by yeah. then. But if you have an emotional charge with it, you can speed that up substantially, and that's the cool part. So what we do in this success therapy process is we're using reason, repetition, and emotional charge. In fact, the negative emotional charge that you had, we're kind of doing a Taekwondo move on you and using that energy for you instead of against you. So that when you change that belief, what you may have felt negatively about in the past, you now feel awesome about. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Now what we're offering is a free consultation. So if you've had enough information, you want to contact Success Therapy, there's our number. You can email us at info at successtherapy.ca or you can go to facebook.com slash mysuccesstherapy and like us. We would love it if you do that.
uh, it helps get the word out to more people because Facebook's algorithms say that the more people are interested in you, you must be more interesting. So please go and do that. That would be awesome. Another thing I'd like you to do is pull out a business card. Your business card, not John's. <laughs> he gave me an ample supply, but... Hey, now what I would like you to do on that business card is I would like you to write down Mrs. Q. M-R-S-Q. Just anywhere. Hopefully your cards aren't like our cards where you can't actually write on them because they're black. Yeah. Lovely. And as we're going through this presentation, at some point in time in the presentation, you may get struck and you may decide, hey, I would really like to do that consultation. I want a meeting with you and what do I do? So if that happens throughout the meeting, if you could just take a pen and put a circle around the M for meeting, that would be awesome. The other thing that might come up is you might go, oh my God, I totally know somebody who needs this information which happens more often than not because we love solving other people's problems better than we love solving our own. None of you have ever experienced that. Yeah. But buddy John, on the other hand, he needs you bad. <laughs> so that's why he's gonna circle all of these. So if you have a referral for us, go ahead and circle the R, and that would be awesome. The thing that may happen is you may think, hey, this is an awesome talk. I think you should go and speak in front of my group of whatevers, and we'd love to have you have a speaking engagement for you. So if you have a speaking engagement for us that you'd like to let us know about, that would be awesome. Go ahead and circle yes. And finally, if you have any questions about what's going on and you just want to email me in private and go, hey, just got a question about this but didn't want to bring it up in front of the group, that's totally cool. Uh, happy to do that. Just circle the queue, and at the end, we'll take your cards and one verify that you are here. Make sure that you have a link to the video, and second of all, um, we will address one of those issues if they are circled. Fair enough. Awesome. So, a little bit of history of us. If you don't know, my name is Michelle Medlock. Obviously, we used to have a clinic in Mayfair Place, which is just in the corner of Elbow and Heritage Drive in Calgary. At that time, I hired and trained five therapists, and since then, we have worked with hundreds of clients. By 2007, we were fully developed this, or I fully developed this process called success therapy. Uh, so, previous to that, we were working with clients and kind of doing a hodgepodge of stuff, and each one, therapist was doing their own thing. And we'd have weekly meetings and go, okay, what worked, what didn't work, what do people like, what do they respond to, what's getting long term effects, what isn't. And being the computer programmer that I was, I went, this is ridiculous. Like, we've got all these tools, but it's kind of like walking into a Home Depot going, okay, I want to build a cabin, but I have no freaking clue what, um, what tool to use. And I'm sure you can think if you, or imagine if you wanted to build a cabinet and you walked into a Home Depot and you were in the paint aisle, you'd be sitting there going, like, how am I going to build a cabinet out of this stuff? It doesn't make any sense right, so you're not in the wrong, right aisle, but at the point where you do build the cabinets, eventually you're gonna to wanna to paint. So it's a matter of figuring out what you need to do and when. As a computer programmer, I figured out that we actually think the same way a computer gets programmed. That's the only way we could really create computer programming was to emulate it after ourselves. So what I did was looked at this thing called an if-then statement. If this happens, then I react this way. And if we can go back into those statements and rewrite them, just like a computer programmer does in the coding, and then hit render, right? You go into your user side of the software, and all of a sudden the software starts behaving differently. So I figured we should be able to do that to ourselves. And in fact, we can. So when we go in and say, you know, if this happens, then I react that way, instead of having a panic attack or freaking out or wishing that this person wasn't here or wishing that you could go and hide under a rock, then from now on it's, if this happens, I meet a stranger, then I react appropriately and I'm really happy to meet them and it's all about them and it's all good. Hit render and off you go and then the next day you're just going, wow, I totally would have freaked out by meeting this person, but I'm not doing that anymore. That's kind of what happens after our sessions and it is awesome. So. Liz can tell you she's smiling and laughing. There's a ton of people that have done our process and they're blown away by how well it works. So by 2009, I started working solely with business owners and helping them in their businesses to become successful. 
and in fact doubling, tripling, and in some cases 10xing their businesses. So if they're making 100 grand when they met me, they're making a million dollars now, that happens and it's awesome. Awesome, awesome. More so for them than me, I'm sure, but I like it. So in 2016, uh, now, today, we've worked with thousands of clients. We have international clientele from Brussels to Australia, from the Arctic Circle all the way down to Argentina, and we currently have three success therapists. Uh, this is Paul Eisner. He's awesome and amazing, has a background and experience doing sales, so he's been in commission sales, and he works a lot with our clients in that arena, as well as kind of the other issues that come up, because... He's awesome, he's got a heart of gold. If you meet him, you'll love him. Tanya is um, a mom, and she has experienced multitasking and being able to um, bring all sorts of wisdom of project management and things like that to the table as far as her business clients go. She also works with people, obviously, with their just confidence, communication skills, and she is more on the side that we would call the intuitive side, and she just has this innate ability to be able to go, hey, have you ever thought that this might be the problem? And all of a sudden it's like, oh, bing, the lights go on, and you're like, yeah, it's totally what's going on. So she's amazing at that. And we have Kevin Meyer, who has experience in business. He's been an entrepreneur for years and helps immensely with our the business side, our business owners, and being able to help them to navigate this whole thing called business now in the world. So these are who we have working with us now, and obviously we have Liz, who is our consultant and is working with people to kind of bring them into the fold, get them the information they need about what we do and how we do it. So the purpose of success therapy is we believe to bring peace of mind, harmony, and excellence to your life. A lot of people think they have to be born with a silver spoon in order to be able to kind of have the enlightened life, and it's not true. We help you to think the way you want to think, feel the way you want to feel, act the way you want to act, and more importantly, get the results that you want to get. Because the way you think affects the way you feel, the way you feel affects the way you act, and the way you act affects your results directly. So if we can go in and help you with the thoughts you have, it trickles down into the results that you're getting. So we want to also help you to overcome habits and beliefs that you may have that you don't want and help you to create the future that you do want. We do that especially by helping you overcome the trials of the past, although you don't need to have any trials and tribulations of the past. It's just simply programming, right? If you grew up and everybody around you was you know, an, an employee, then you're just gonna grow up thinking, hey, that's the way it is. And then if you have this innate desire to be an entrepreneur and you go out and start your own business, what do you think everybody around you is gonna think? Crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> but what are you thinking? So they're not exactly going to have the mind frame or the, the state of mind to be able to help you developing this entrepreneurial spirit. And that's all it is. So when we go and do success therapy with entrepreneurs, sometimes they have awesome childhoods. They have amazing childhoods. But they've created these beliefs that say, I should do it this way and I should do that way. And we just need to help them to speed up that change process from starting their business to becoming successful instead of in 10 years to do it in maybe 10 months or sooner and allowing you to live an extraordinary life, which we believe all of you are. In fact, we believe that every person was meant to live a life filled with happiness. Anybody here want to have a life filled with happiness? <laughs> awesome. Because it's fun. So, like I said, how it works is we turn around the negative patterns to have supportive thoughts and emotions that are appropriate and responsive to the current situation that you're in. It helps you to be present to your current circumstances. You can change your behaviors to the ones that move you closer to your goals faster and more easily than you've done in the past. So if you've ever set a goal and it didn't happen as quickly and easily as you wanted it to, nobody's ever had that experience except for me, right? <laughs> well, I can assure you, if it hasn't happened, we can still shrink that time zone faster for you. During the process, the body and mind are in a relaxed, neutral state Usually at home or in the office, in bed or in a recliner, which is awesome. We, we call it a working nap, and most of my clients are like, really, I get to stay home? Really, in bed? So we have this kind of joke. I, I've known you guys for like half an hour now, so I can tell you this. I tease my clients that they have to go with their laptop and their credit card and close the door and tell their wife they'll be back in two hours. Like, <laughs> really, and then they come out and they're really happy, and it's awesome, and they're really good at business all of a sudden. And, 
every once in a while the wives will kind of peek their head in and go, you Michelle, I'm listening. It's like, hey, go on. <laughs> so success therapy is a guided education communication process to a person's mind that allows you to rewrite the programming of your mind so that your conscious and your subconscious minds believe the same message. Right? As soon as those your conscious mind and your subconscious mind are in tune, all of a sudden you start doing things much more faster and much more effortlessly than ever before. So if you really want to understand how this works, how many of you have ever mastered a skill, any skill? Excellent. You should all have your hands up because you all know how to walk, right? <laughs> I saw you come in, so I know you got that one down pat. When you started to learn how to walk, was it easy and effortless? No. Not at all. You may not remember that, but odds are pretty good. You bumped your head, you fell, you knocked out some furniture, you may have even knocked out a few people along the way. But today, you don't even have to think about it. It's just easily easy and effortless. And that's because your thoughts of, I will walk over there, and your feelings of, I can walk over there, and your actions of, your legs moving, are all in alignment, and it just happens effortlessly. So what happens when we don't do something effortlessly, say we set a goal to lose 20 pounds and all of a sudden we find ourselves gorging on chocolate cake, that's when our thoughts and our feelings are not in alignment, right? Our thoughts say, I want to lose weight, and our body goes, no, chocolate cake, chocolate cake is awesome, right? And overloads on it. So those two aren't in harmony. But when they're in harmony, everything happens easily and effortlessly, and you go, no, nope, I'm bypassing the chocolate cake today. I'm going to the gym. This is great. All of a sudden, bam, it happens easily and effortlessly. Make sense? So all we're doing is making sure that your subconscious mind believes the same message, and then that way, you're creating the results that you want. So how do you prepare for your session? During your consultation, you'll prepare for your session both logically and logistically. So logically, you'll want to have a list of things that you'd like to work on in the session, and we affectionately refer to this as your grocery list. So it can include any thoughts, feelings, or actions that you'd like to eliminate from your life, or it can include any thoughts, actions, feelings that you want to assimilate into your life. So let's look at that a little in depth, especially when it comes to the fear of rejection. Now, when it comes to the fear of rejection, that's a huge kind of label that kind of umbrellas a whole lot of reasons why somebody might have a fear of rejection. So I want you to just kind of notice you and what's going on for you. And even if you're not currently experiencing a fear of rejection when you go and talk to people uh, or send out emails or have negotiations or do whatever it is, look at the past of when you had felt that. Is it possible that there was a need for approval there? In other words, if you know people don't approve of me, something's wrong with me. I'm not good enough, I'm not valuable enough, I'm not whatever the case might be. There might be a fear of criticism. Oh, I can't be wrong. I can't have done something wrong because if I'm wrong, all of a sudden I'm not good. And if I'm not good, well, you know, and it goes to a downhill stream. All of these things can be or can attribute to this thing called the fear of rejection. When we do a success therapy session, if somebody comes in and they say, I have a fear of rejection, I want to get over it, absolutely we can help them with that, bar none, because your mind knows where that's coming from, and we can kind of go down that rabbit hole and, and find the origin of it. Sometimes, though, people will come in and they'll go, okay, I have this whole grocery list I want to work on. We'll just start at the top of the list, and we'll go bang, bang, bang until they're all gone. The more you can kind of... Um, Find those little nuances of what it is that's bugging you or what it is that's stopping you from doing the things that you want to do, the more effective it becomes. So if somebody comes in and they say to me, I have a fear of rejection, I want to overcome it. Usually I'll say, oh, that's awesome. It's probably going to be about six sessions to get rid of them because it's just a big umbrella name. And I don't know what kind of, kind of demons and dragons are hanging out inside that big bubble. But if you can come in and say, oh, I have these three things, like one thing, I just, I have a need for approval. If people don't like me, I lose my shit. They go, great, awesome, let's go work on that one. And that may be one session, which is phenomenal because you may have experienced that for your entire life, and we can eliminate it in two hours. And it's totally cool. So I just want you to take a minute, even if you're not coming in for success therapy session, I totally get that, that's cool. But if you look at these and go, 
do I get a nig niggling or an edge to it? Does something kind of go eh, and grind you the wrong way when you think about any one of these things? And when you go home tonight, you can start looking at those in depth and going, okay, so why do I have a fear of criticism? What do I care if somebody criticizes me? And why do I value their opinion anyways if they don't know all the stuff that I've gone through? Or maybe they know something I don't and I can find out more information. Well, why am I taking it negatively? Why am I taking it as an insult to me? And then you can start to do some in-depth work and whatever process you decide to do to help you to eliminate that, you're obviously further ahead, yes? Right, and again, going back to that reason uh, to be able to change your beliefs, if all you do is figure out why you had that in the first place and you go, oh, I get it. Well, that's ridiculous. I don't want to think that way anymore. And then you just don't think that way anymore and you don't get that niggly feeling anymore. Awesome. Do that all day. Do that with every single one of them until they're gone. Cool? So take a few seconds and just you know, write down these things or write down the ones that kind of give you an edge or just put a little star next to them. Take a couple of minutes and then we'll get back into this thing. You know, we're just writing them down and going through which ones affect us. We'll go ahead and feel it. Cool. So remember when I said that sometimes our thoughts can act like Christmas lights and they're all in this big jumble and they're all tied together? Remember that? It was only like 20 minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just checking. <laughs> so what happens is we can have all of these things, all of these ideas can be attached to this one thing called this fear of rejection. Now some of you, did anybody go through this and go, I don't get why that would be attributed to fear of rejection. Like why would fear of loss be attributed to fear of rejection? Anybody have any of those kind of questions while you're going through? No? You all totally got how they relate? Sweet, you guys are way ahead of the masses. So sometimes people go like, I totally don't get it. Like who cares if I, if, if I lose something in this because I haven't lost anything if I'm going and talking to somebody that I've never met before that has never promised to give me anything. Like I don't have anything yet. So how could I have a fear of loss? But what happens is we can have this perception that there is a value in that relationship and that that value is already there. And that Right, that potential value represents a real value emotionally inside of us. So that when I say something and I go, oh man, I totally pissed off Rick, I'm so sorry about that. Oh, I swore again, oh my God, he must be hating me right now. Now I have the potential of having this fear of a loss that I'm not going to get something that I might have got otherwise. It might have been a deal that we had, it might have been a contract we had, it might have been a referral that he had with somebody. It might have just been, you know, the connection. Now I gotta meet you at all these networking events and I think you hate me and oh my God, is that gonna be awkward? Right, all of those ideas get kind of mishmashed in or they can 
and we want to be able to separate them so that we can understand each one and go, you know what, it's okay. Because quite frankly, now that I've dealt with all my stuff, I can swear like a pirate and I do. Trust me, it's really pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> and if you like it, great. And if you don't like it, well, then don't hang around me because you're probably not going to like the next you know, 20 years. <laughs> On the other hand, if it doesn't bother you and you can either blow over it or you like it and, and it works for you, awesome. We're going to get along great. You're going to get a ton of information. I'm good either way. Cool? Nice. So we want to be able to help you with all of these things because each one of these things can be immense and overwhelming unto itself. You get all of them mashed together and all of a sudden inertia kicks in and you're not making the calls you want to make, you're not sending the emails you want to send, you're not talking to the people you want to talk to, and that just kind of sucks, let alone not making the money or getting the results that you want to get. We want you to be just on fire going, hey, here I am, I'm awesome and amazing, how do you like me now? And then if they say, well, not really, then you go, hey, I totally get it, that's cool. Have a good life and all the best. Cool? Nice. Any questions about those? Yeah, I like this one. So, logistically, you want to be somewhere that you won't be disturbed for two hours, and ideally somewhere that you're comfortable. And if that does not look comfortable to you, then don't worry. You don't have to go in that position. <laughs> in fact, we highly recommend that you're at home in bed, because that is the most comfortable place, or in a recliner, anywhere that your body can kind of shut down for two hours, because your body is not really part of the process. And the less attention it demands from you, the easier it is to just pay attention to what's going on in your head. So, like I said, um, at home, in bed, couch, recliner, choose to stay at work, you can grab a couple of chairs and throw them together. Some people set up tents at their office so they'll have a little uh, yoga mat or something that they just kind of hang out with. Uh, if they have glass windows like that, they usually shut, close the shutters so that the, you know, the, the cleaners and their kids aren't sitting there staring in and going, what do I do? <laughs> we have had that happen before, it was pretty fun. But we're okay with it. So, the two hour allotment, a lot of people will go like two hours, really, does that take two hours? Those two hours go by like that. It's like, really, that was like 15 minutes because you're not necessarily consciously remembering all of the stuff, although you're attentive to the stuff while it happens. But when it's all said and done, all you really care about is how excited you are to go and make stuff happen now. So that two hours is well worth it, and it allows you to kind of move on with your day and, and achieve things that you never would have been able to achieve otherwise. In fact, in a lot of our clients will say that we can accomplish in two hours what they may have taken decades to try and accomplish on their own. It is awesome and fantastic what we can do in a two-hour period. So how the sessions are held, they're held over the phone or Skype. We don't need to see each other while we're doing them. I just need to hear you or the therapists just need to hear you and you hear them. A lot of people ask why we don't do them in office anymore. And one is because we didn't need to. I was doing a lot of my clients over the phone. So it just made sense that the people in Calgary didn't really need to come and see me. They could do it over the phone too. And in fact, it works a lot better because when you have kind of me talking in your ears, I'm right in your ear as opposed to across the room. And likewise, I can hear your mic right here as opposed to trying to figure out what you're saying while I'm sitting across the room. So it actually works better from a technology point of view. And most people are more comfortable at home in bed than they are you know, trying to find parking and then trying to find a building and then trying to find your office and then waiting in reception and having all these people and staring at you and then you gotta go in the office. And all of that just kind of creates an environment that we didn't really need. So when you're at home, you make a phone call, bam, you're in, and it's all good. It's more of a distraction. Oh yeah, it's way less distraction, <laughs> way less. Especially at Mayfair when the parking was a schmozzle and the elevators got <laughs> stuck. <laughs> so we want you to have a good set, headset on so that you can both hear us clearly and we can hear you clearly. You don't want to have a handset where you actually have to hold the phone because then your arm gets sore or you're numb and it falls asleep. So you want a headset ideally, although a lot of people will just use their cell phone and kind of put it on their chest and put it on speakerphone. That works awesome too. Cell phones, speakerphones, headsets off of laptops, any personal devices, whatever gadgets, widgets, and gadgets you got, they're all good. Um, if you have any questions, obviously you can talk to the hypnotherapist during your consultation and uh, we'll help you to figure out what works best. So what happens after the session? This is a cool part. So after the session, 
Oftentimes, especially in the first one, people will feel kind of like they've been hit by a Mack truck, but they feel really happy about it. <laughs> it sounds kind of weird to say it that way, but it is. You go through a lot of work, even though it's just mental. Um, you drain a ton of stuff and you feel fantastic. So most people will have a sense of bliss afterwards, especially after the first one. And our goal, especially if there's multiple sessions involved, is to get that feeling of bliss to last longer and longer. And the period of, oh, wow, well, you know, my reality kind of, my normal reality came back. We want that to go away for good. We don't want that coming back anymore. And it's just, again, depends on the complication of how many issues are all bound up and wound up and all that kind of fun stuff. Once we get them all cleared up, you feel awesome all the time, and you're like, yeah, I can meet anybody anytime, anywhere, and I'm golden with them. Uh, right afterwards, it's just like waking up after a nap. You'll be fine. If you have a meeting afterwards, just kind of run up and down some stairs, and bam, you're back into the room and, and where you need to be. You'll be fine. You can drive. You can do all sorts of stuff. Are the results permanent? Yes, absolutely, and that's a fun part. The reason, like you said, when we were doing our staff meetings is we wanted to have the most permanent experience for somebody. We wanted to get to the root cause of it so that we didn't have to use repetition in order to be able to change somebody's beliefs. We wanted it done in that appointment. So we found that taking it from a one-hour appointment to a two-hour appointment, we could totally go down that rabbit hole and come back up and get all the work done that we needed to do. And that when we did that, everything was awesome afterwards. So we've had, obviously we've been doing this since 2007 and we have clients that have worked with us at that time and they say, yep, life is freaking awesome still. And they're super grateful that they've been around. So yes, as far as we can tell, 10 years is permanent and hopefully it'll stay longer. We'll let you know as we go. The vast majority of our clients say that the experience are extremely delighted with it and that we can accomplish, like I said, within two hours what most therapies require months and even years to produce and yes are enjoying the results years later and now even decades later we've had clients that were in traditional therapy i don't want to bash any one of them you know, because some therapists are good some are bad some real estate agents are good some are bad some are like you're going to get it in every industry right but we've had ones that were in therapy for over 20 years and accomplished nothing like nothing and we do a two-hour session and they're like Oh my God, that was freaking amazing. We do six sessions with them and their lives are completely turned around. It is sweet. So what does it work on? Well, this is a super fun part. And for those of you who can't see this or read that fast, it's a ton of stuff. <laughs> I got the one. I got the one. Yeah, yeah. Nice. You can copy Rick's notes afterwards. Is test <laughs> so, exactly. Yes, I love you. So some of the things that may affect you if you're in business or in sales are things like boardroom presentations, general confidence, improved concentration, memory improvement, money issues, prospecting, public speaking, remembering people's names, uh, self-sabotage. All of these things can be helped. Oftentimes when I'm working with clients one-on-one, -on -one, I have clients that sign up for a year with me will start working with business issues and sometimes it'll get to personal issues and they're like, well, you know, I really want to quit doing this thing. Like, I don't know, eating during, whoops, during the meetings. Um, it can be as weird and arbitrary as that. It's like every time I go into a meeting, I'm just starving. I'm like, okay, well, let's work on that <laughs> see what happens. So it's, it's not necessarily that we stick to just business um, transactions or dealings. We can work on a ton of stuff. So what some other people are saying you might be interested in, one was uh, Nigel Dunan from the UK. He said, my fear of rejection was paralyzing. I couldn't pick up the phone. I couldn't talk to strangers. And I certainly couldn't talk, walk into an office and just door knock. But my business depends on it. When I found Success Therapy, I was sick to my stomach because I wanted it to work so bad, but I didn't know if it would work on me. After just a few sessions, I was giddy as a schoolboy. I loved making cold calls. It became a game. And to say I'm making over 300 pounds a year now is because of these sessions would be an understatement. Uh, and that was a while ago, he's making more than that now. I wouldn't say I had a fear of rejection, but I absolutely hated it when people said no to me or didn't go for the deal. In fact, I still won't admit to it, but after having my success therapy sessions, I've come to the point where I don't care what people say. I care about them, I just don't care what they say 
And the sooner I can get them to make a decision either way, the happier I am. Michelle Carrington, New York, USA. So we have a ton of people that we've worked with that to, if we just look at the fear and rejection side of things, we just look at prospecting abilities, well, we, I couldn't even guesstimate how many hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars are directly related to the activities that they've done that they wouldn't have been able to do without it. It's ridiculous. Uh, and this is just the beginning. I was awarded with the Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Medal for my work with post-traumatic stress disorder. And I've worked with people that say, well, my accounting is going into 128 days uh, or 120 days and I want it shorter. So it can be anything within that spectrum and that's a huge spectrum. So no matter what changes you want to make, we're there to help you make it, it happen. So if you have anything from anxiety, do you want to improve your zebra riding? That's A to Z. <laughs> it's going, wow, we don't do zebra riding. Uh, we'd love to give you a 15 minute consultation and how you can do that is you can contact Success Therapy at 403-259-2490, extension two, or you can email us at info at successtherapy.ca. And uh, like I said, facebook.com slash my success therapy, we'd love to help you because you can change your life through the power of your mind. Oops. So on that note, um, do -do -do. I can go back and go, any questions about anything that I've covered, it's free and open, no more sold. Just a comment, uh, yeah. you're the second person I, the second lady in the has won that award. Uh, you have to look at her, her later name with Michelle Moon. I haven't. Yes. She yeah. actually started a, a bra company, believe it or not. Cool. And uh, she was actually awarded that, uh, I think it was the same award, but I think it was the first. Yeah. For actually being the top female entrepreneur of the year. Nice. In the, in the UK. Very cool. That's awesome. And in fact, my sister actually received it as well, but she is, uh, she received it for work with burn patients. She's the Dean of Occupational Therapy at McGill University and works with burns and plastics and is revol or evolutionary, revolutionary in that industry. And yeah, she also that, that's too. her modeling your product. Nice. I don't look like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's her website. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for the visual distraction there, right? And uh, yeah. anybody have any questions about what I am talking about? Yeah. Back, yeah. back to sorry, sorry. well, brick wall, brick wall. <laughs> Half the room's distracted, if not all. Have you ever uh, found <laughs> oh, oh as, far, as far as getting people really <laughs> isolated and into their own space, as far as concentration here, are these an isolation tank? Um, I don't actually have to use an isolation That's a cool comment. So if you're not familiar with isolation tanks, they're like the cool new thing now, um, <laughs> where it's like a big bathtub with a lid. So it's kind of a bathtub meets coffin type item. And, uh, and you float in it. And it's got salt water. For water. Is that from altered states? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can go in them and kind of hang out and meditate. And yeah. apparently, you get wicked. Um, well, you can get wicked uh, effects from it. Uh, yeah. Some people just freak out and go, "No, I'm out of here. I'm done." Um, but if you actually let go and go into that, where you're not having any sensory perception from the body, it's totally cool. I'd love to do it. I haven't done it yet. But when you go into, when we do our success therapy sessions, we do at the beginning of them what we refer to as an induction. Some people refer to it as guided meditation. Some people refer to it as uh, uh, meditation. Some, there's all sorts of names for it. Basically, we start talking to you, and one of four things happens. One is that you go in this really cool Alice in Wonderland state where you're kind of disassociated from your body. You know it's there. You just don't care. And your memories come back to you more easily and effortlessly, and you can start to manipulate them. Uh, and when you go into this state, it is essentially the same as being in an isolation tank or a deprivation tank, because you just, you don't care. It's like your body's irrelevant. Um, you know it's there. You know where you are. You know what you're doing. You just really don't care about it. So uh, we do that without the deprivation tank, so we don't actually need it, which is super cool. That is cool. Yeah, it is so fun. Mm -hmm. And at the end of our sessions, we, we go and we do the work, and then at the end of the sessions, if we have time, we just go and play and have fun 
in that state and make sure that you're in a state of complete and total confidence that you know that you're in, in control of your mind, body, and results and that you can do anything you want to do and it feels super awesome. So that when you come back and you're, you're totally on fire, you're like, yes, this is awesome, I want to go do it. Not literally on fire, but you know, emotionally you're just jazzed about the world and, and everything that you can do and conquer. So yeah, we get you there. You, you don't even need the deprivation tank. Well, I assume, yeah, you want the conversation to happen and that would be real tough inside the tank to actually have a headset and have a conversation. No. <laughs> you could make it happen. There could be no Oh yeah, you could have little speakers and microphones in there. That'd be awesome. I'm, I'm thinking. So new division. <laughs> I'm thinking the government and the states has probably got that one down. Yeah. yeah. Whoever does those. Are you doing the sessions? What's that? How frequently do you? How frequently do we do the sessions? It's totally up to you. So, uh, we, I have done them in kind of emergency situations where they wanted it done like now and we did daily sessions. Um, that's intense. I don't recommend it, but um, in this particular case, he was experiencing post-traumatic stress disorder and his family was in danger and we needed it done like now. So we did um, daily sessions for a week. Uh, normally we'll do them once a week and that's totally cool if somebody has something that they really want to deal with. Um, my business clients, I usually do one a month with them and I do have clients that will come to me once every six months or otherwise and just go and pop in and go hey can I book an appointment let's go deal with this now so it really doesn't matter how far apart they are because whatever we deal with in that situation or in that session gets resolved so if there's more kind of wires tangled up in it it just depends on how soon you want to get them untangled um, sometimes that depends on somebody's financial circumstances. They're going, no, I can only pay for them once a month. They go, cool, we'll do it once a month. Um, sometimes you just don't want them more frequently than that. Sometimes they work a job and they can only get so much time off of work. It just totally depends. What's the, uh, I know it's going to depend upon uh, each individual situation. So what do you find is the optimal model of number of sessions a person needs? I guess it really depends a lot on the person. It, well, it totally depends on the person. It depends on what they're working on. So. We, and it seems really random when I say this, so it's probably not gonna mean a whole lot to you, but things like dust allergies or pollen allergies, we can deal with those in one session and they're gone. Um, other things like weight loss, well, it depends on how much weight you wanna lose. Things like fear of rejection, remember it's like that big goal, but if you have one thing where it really bugs me when people say no to when I make an offer, that can be gone in one session. So. We do offer single sessions. People can come and do single sessions. We offer a six tack. So if people want to pay for the six sessions up front, they basically pay for five, get the six one free when they pay up front. Or we have packages of 12. If they want to pay for nine up front, then they get the last three for free. Are you, are you going to get into pricing here? Um, that is my pricing. So it's not usually. Um, <laughs> So, so that wasn't pricing, those are package numbers. Um, <laughs> that's all you get. The, uh, yeah, it, so it totally depends on what somebody's working on, and that's why we do the consultation with them to figure out what's going on. Because, yeah. well, because I just don't know. I mean, it may be, you know, hey, go buy a book, it's 30 bucks, or hey, you're going to be my client for the rest of your life, start saving now. Okay, <laughs> that's you. So, 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 don't really say that to you. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, do you have any room in your mortgage? I got a referral for you. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> Kidding. Nobody has ever had to mortgage there. <laughs> that I know. It's not even that expensive. Yeah, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's even worth going yeah. to a mortgage broker to deal with that. So, yeah. yeah, we're definitely in the more affordable range. Um, yeah, it, again, it just, it, Super totally depends. I mean, if somebody wants to lose 30 pounds, then they're looking at, you know, the training and programs and, 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 whereas if they just want to lose it, so it just depends. Yep. Are we talking about uh, low hundreds or high hundreds of dollars? Something <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for you? For me, it's been really, really expensive. You know, raise the prices for me. So your, your low end, just so you know, a single session with uh, one of our therapists is $300 a session. If you want to work with me on business, it can go up to 25000 a year. Mm -hmm. So those are kind of your, your ranges. Fair enough. 
Like, and it's a good page. <laughs> like, well, yeah, so that's why it totally depends really on what you're looking at, right? Yeah. And how much you want to, and whether or not you want to put that much into it. And if you want to do a session once every six months and kind of figure it out from there or pay it up front. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's kind of That's really cool. Yeah. Cool. So cool. Um, awesome. Again, if you guys want to, if you have your business cards, if you uh, had time to circle, Either you want a meeting with us or you have a referral for us or a uh, speaking engagement that you think would be appropriate for us, we'd love to go and do those as well. Or if you just have a question that you didn't feel comfortable asking right now, totally cool, giving you a call back or emailing, whatever you're most comfortable with. Um, we do have a lot of time, I believe, compared to, oh yeah, we got now. Um, so what I'd like to do with you, if you want to, and if you don't want to participate in this, you're totally cool to say, yeah, I'm done, hasta luego, bye bye. And if you want to, hang around and um, do it. Or if nobody wants to, we can hang out and network. Again, I'm totally up for it. But what I'd like to do is just do a little kind of guided visualization with you guys and help you go through some exercises to get rid of fear of rejection and those other items if you're interested. Um, if you're not interested, again, we can either network or you can leave. So, anybody interested in doing a session? Sure. Awesome. Anybody not want to do one? You're totally cool if you don't want to do one. Okay. So good. Y'all feel better? Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's kind of numb, but... <laughs> Probably sleep better, think. Yeah. Yes, you absolutely you will. You will, you will, you will. And, um, you know, when stuff happens that you notice in the next few weeks, you go, oh my god, this happened I totally noticed it. Email us and let us know because we love hearing about that stuff. Oftentimes, you know, we hear about the complaints, but when people are happy and ecstatic, we never hear from them again because they're happy and ecstatic, and that's what we wanted. But if you remember to email us, let us know, that'd be great. Uh, fortunately, we don't get too many complaints either. So that's good. <laughs> um, yeah, so any, uh, what was your experience with that one, by the way? Anybody have any cool, funky stuff happen to them that you weren't expecting? Just relax, that was nice, nice, good. I told you you should have rested your hand. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good, good, good. But yeah, you're the only one that didn't have the complete head rest. And... <laughs> you hear somebody snore. Yeah, let me see. No, none of you snored, it was all good. If you hear it snoring, you were making it up. <laughs> really? It sounded like snoring. Yeah, kind of breathing maybe. Yeah, yeah, there's panting. <laughs> no snoring, it was all good. Cool. So at, in our seminars, when we do it with Awareness Strategies, so for those of you who don't know, I also run another company called Awareness Strategies, and we do training seminars and the coaching side of things. And at the end of our uh, training sessions, we do a big sleepy session, and everybody gets all excited. We'll pull out yoga mats and everything, pillows, and lie down on the floor, and make the place black, freak out all the neighbors, and, and all it's an opportunity to be able to just let everything that you learned in the course or every, all the decisions that you make that you wanted to, you know, take action on, implant those and let go of all the stuff that's not working for you anymore, and you get to make those choices, and yeah, we've been so, awesome. so we're in the stride just kind of integrated in with this thing. Yes. Yeah, so um, it all started with awareness strategies. We started training the teaching the seminars, and we started off teaching Bob Proctor seminars. So, so you may not know who Bob is. Anybody, anybody? So you all know who Bob Proctor is? Okay, so we started teaching his seminars about 2003, and I started noticing that some people would catch on to it super fast, and other people were like, I don't get it, Monday again. I don't know what to do. So then I started coaching people on how to integrate the information into their lives, and helping them make it kind of mean part of their days. And then, um, wow, that's an on switch, isn't it? I like the dimmer switches. <laughs> 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 um, and I started studying the mind and how we change our beliefs faster and faster so that when people want to be able to integrate new ways of thinking, new ways of doing things, that they can do it like that. And that's um, through that process, I. Uh, studied everything under the sun in 2005. I bought the clinic in Mayfair Place, and we started practicing everything we could in those sessions. And 2000, by 2007, I had developed success therapy. So that's kind of where the, the, I guess, two legs came from, awareness strategies, the training and consulting side. We don't teach any of Bob's courses anymore. Uh, we have rewritten them, and, well, we've 
written on our own courses and we teach our own courses now. And um, still do success therapy as a one-off, but we do integrate it with our uh, seminars and our uh, coaching as well. Now Brad has a third leg of the company because we transitioned from doing all live courses here in Calgary to having an international clientele. We wanted all of our programs and things online. So he's my IT guru, my, uh, my left brain. And uh, he started a, these sales and marketing automation leg of the company. So now he actually helps entrepreneurs to set up their sales and marketing automation, uh, mostly through Infusionsoft, if you know what that is, a huge robust database that does all sorts of fun things, not just take care of your contacts, but also sends out automatic emails, also takes your billing, also does everything, it's awesome. Um, but he does that as a kind of third leg of the company. So yeah, it all kind of squishes together and helps small business owners grow their business. And that's what we do. We'll do it in whatever way you need done. <laughs> so, awesome. Well, thank you very much again for your time. I appreciate it, appreciate it immensely. Um, I would love to get your business cards. And if you have circled any of those, awesome. If you have not, odds are pretty good you're already in our database anyways because you got the emails. Uh, <laughs> so you don't have to be worried about that part of it. We just want to know who you are, that you are here, and, uh, and if you are interested in anything, we make sure that we follow, through, follow up and that we don't let you slip through the cracks. Awesome, so thank you again. Thank you. Success Therapy. Growing Small Business.